You're listening to The Hello Well with Danielle Show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and power related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle Washington, and I am just grateful for all of y'all. I'm grateful for those who showed me love and well wishes on my birthday. Thank you so much for shouting me out. I had a beautiful time when I was in D.C., and a lot of things came up, which is part of how this topic came up today. So for the last three days, I have been trying to detangle my hair. My hair has been this matted mess where I'm like, oh my God, do I just need to cut it off and start all over? And I'm like, I've worked so hard to get here. We're not cutting it off. But I thought about it a little bit further. I was like, this is kind of how we deal with emotions. Like we need to detangle our emotions like we detangle our hair because you want to detangle your hair without breakage the same way you want to detangle your emotions and your thoughts without breaking. But we feel like, you know, we got to get to it all and we go for the roots first and realizing when you go for the roots, when you haven't started at the bottom and worked your way into the roots, you can jack up everything. And so it was like, this is the sweet topic because it feels like that's where I'm going through. I don't know if it's the fall equinox that's coming up. It's the new moon. It's just that it's a new season for me and I'm coming into a different world, but this is kind of where we're going. And so I was it's like, how can we detangle our emotions the way we detangle our hair? And there's steps. We all know the steps. And if you don't know the steps, you can go on Google and you can find the steps on how to detangle your hair. Because, you know, I had to do that because like, I've never had my hair this matted. I've never had my hair in the point where it was like, I, I don't know what to do. But I feel like I've had those emotions, those situations in my emotions where i I've had so many detangled, like so many knotted up and matted emotions that are coming from all these different directions that I'm like, I just don't know what to do. But then I've been able to work through those. And I was just like, I work through those the same way I work through my hair. And so one of the first things I feel like you need to do in any of these processes is gathering your supplies. So I had to gather my supplies and think about what supplies did I need? Because if you try to detangle your hair, if you've ever tried to detangle your hair dry, you'll know that that can be some painful ass ish. But to minimize the pain, you not have to have the right tools. So whether it's a journal, whether it's that you need some wine, maybe it's weed. If you're in a state that has legalized marijuana, maybe that's part of the tools that you need to help you in detangling your emotions. Maybe it's creating a quiet space. Maybe it is music. It's having your favorite food. Uh, It's maybe it's your yoga mat. It's whatever it is, figuring out what tools do you need and also making sure to think about what things that you may need to avoid that will have a negative effect. So if having alcohol or drugs may be a negative effect and will not be an actual helpful tool, but it actually will have the reverse moments in it. That's not a good look for you. And like, so those were kind of some of the things I had to think about. I'm like, okay, what do I need to detangle my emotions? And then going from there, it was like, okay, after I've gotten all my tools, one of the major things that you need is water. They tell you, do not detangle your hair when it's dry, which means also don't try to detangle emotions when you are like depleted. Maybe you need to find a way to pour into yourself before you start trying to detangle your emotions. And so, okay, when I think about detangling my hair and spraying water or being in the shower, what does that do? That softens your hair up. It makes your hair more flexible. It makes it easier to comb through. And I'm like, okay, so what in my world, what gets you to a softer mood to detangle your emotions? Is it a relaxing bath? Is it singing? Sometimes I like to sing. Sometimes dancing helps me get to that mood. Is it having a conversation with a girlfriend or my therapist? 
Is it meditation? Which for me definitely does help. It has helped me kind of get myself in the right mindset to soften my mood, to soften my emotions, to be able to get to the clarity, to be able to start detangling the matted mess that sometimes can be my life. (laughs) I'm not going to front some days. I'm like, why is my life so much a matted mess? Because I didn't detangle because I didn't take the steps to be methodical about my detangling of my life. Sometimes what is it that kind of helps you soften the mood and detangle so you can detangle these emotions a little better is exercise. It's travel. Like what I've used previously, and I didn't think about it until it kind of went, but this podcast episode is like, I have historically used travel as a way to soften my mood to create the slip so I can be able to get to detangling my emotions and it is definitely helpful for me I mean so much to where I wrote a book about travel is my therapy travel helps me get away from the noise so I can quiet my mind so I can actually do the healing work and I me not being able to travel feels like it's been causing these matted emotions, these matted situations where I'm having friction with people. I'm having friction internally. I'm not, not that I'm not happy because overall I'm in a good space, but things are coming up that I'm being asked to deal with. And again, I'm like, is this Mars coming up at me? And I'm just fiery about everything, but I'm feeling conflicted about so many different things. I'm also having aha moments that I'm having to work through and it sometimes can feel like a matted mess that my hair has been for the last three days because me trying to work through my hair has not been pretty. It has not been pretty because I'm just like, I kept trying a couple different ways and it wasn't working and I didn't realize that I wasn't using, I didn't have the right tools. I wasn't thinking about the right tool sets. I was trying to get to, oh, I found the matted area. Let's just pull now versus, okay, let's ease into it. Let's wet the area. Let's make sure that we're softening up the area. We're making it flexible so it can be easier to comb through. And I wasn't doing those things in my hair, but I also wasn't doing what I, you know, one of the biggest things you could be doing for detangling your hair is they tell you, okay, wet your hair, have the right products. But then the next step isn't just jump and go at trying to comb through it. The next step is to deep condition, leaving in like a major leave-in conditioner because water isn't enough. It's not just enough to soften up the mood, but you need to have something that adds that slip. And what that slip means is it makes it the, the products that make your hair easier to release the knots and the detanglement. So, okay, think about it that way. So you need the slip. So what's the slip in your life for your emotions? What can help you coat your emotions as you go through this process? Because sometimes detangling your emotions can be a lot. You may be, you know, in a space where you're more open and flexible, but that may make you more fragile. Like when you add that, you know, that water, which makes your hair more fragile, it can, your hair can break in that space, but it's actually worse to do it when dry. But so if you're adding that softness and that flexibility and making yourself fragile, and I've been saying fragile, I don't want to use the word fragile in this situation. I think making yourself vulnerable and open, that can feel a lot already. That can feel tumultuous. I think that's the word we're looking for, but Y'all know what I'm trying to say, Uh, but it can make you feel anxious. It can add its own layer of matted emotions when you are allowing yourself to be open and vulnerable to the process of working through these things. So making sure you find the right slip that works for you so you can easily work through the vulnerable moments and whether that slip is therapy. Like I love my therapist because she is a slip that helps me work through and a more easier and softer note through some of these tangled, knotted emotions that I'm going through. I use astrology. Astrology is something, the more I learn and the more I know, I'm realizing that 
a lot of these things that are coming up are in my astrology chart. It's in the transits and I'm recognizing if I can use that as my slip, if I can use that to ease the knotted sections of my life and the knotted emotions that are coming up and there's relationships that are coming up that I'm not understanding why they're coming up, but in utilizing astrology to be like, oh, this is part of the reason why this is coming up. Using my therapist therapist to talk through, oh, these are the things that are showing up and they showed up historically and having her help me work through that, that has been helpful. That has been the slip that I have needed to get through these detangling of these emotions, these knotted, matted moments of my life where I'm just like, I think I just need to cut off everyone and start over when I don't need to cut off everyone. I just need to work through it in a methodical way and being patient with myself and being patient with the process to be able to get through it. Another slip that I've been using is meditation and Kundalini yoga. For me, finding the right Kriya is everything. I recently had a situation and some of the detangled moments I've been going through is I feel like I mislaid trust in someone. I gave trust to someone who said they were ride or die for me, that that they were there for me, they were there for my brand. And I had to come to the conclusion that no, they weren't. And that also this person is working from survival mode. And I had to be able to be okay with that, like to recognize they're coming from some other place and they're coming from her and they have their own trauma that they're coming from in communication with me and detangling all of the different things for me to have the clarity of how to show up in those in that relationship. I had to detangle a relationship I had with a person who I dated for many years that I realized that, oh my God, all this time I thought it was me when this person is hella combative on their own. And I, for years, thought like I just needed to be a certain way for this person to really realize that I'm valuable. I needed to be, I need to say the right things to not piss this person off when recently I realized there's nothing I could say or do. This is just how this person is. But I had to be able to detangle the emotions, the the interactions to get to this point of clarity. And so like working through all these different things, working through, you know, am I being selective or am I avoiding? And that's something where I've been dealing with as a problem. Not a, It's not a problem. It's something I've been dealing with as an emotion that I'm detangling because I'm in a space right now where... I really just want to show up as me. I am so determined to be authentically me. And that means at times I need to be selective about who I let into my world. I need to select about who gets my energy. But am I being selective or am I avoiding because I don't want to get hurt? And that is a fine balance that I am detangling those emotions to figure out when am I being selective and what am I avoiding out of fear? And it is a, a moment of matted, matted, matted emotions that I'm working through that it's not always easy. But going through this process of gathering my supplies, adding my water, getting the deep conditioning and going through the other steps that I'm going to talk through that's really helped me kind of get to this point. And so going back to the deep conditioner and like, you know, figuring out what can help you coat your emotions as you go through this detangling process and making sure that, you know, one of them is not being hangry because, you know, working through some of this healing work when you're hangry doesn't really help. Being sleep deprived, thinking about those things. What can you do to hydrate yourself, to pour into you? Is it going through yoga? Is it having a good conversation? Is it the bath? What helps you pour into you so you can be fully in slip mode to get to this healing work? Because a good conditioner will help you with your emotions and thoughts, and it will help you slip past so you can get to that clarity, so you can remove those loose strands and those tangles and knots. But again, what I said earlier you want to make sure you apply the products from the end to the root. And what that means in the emotional standpoint and not looking at just from the hair is you don't want to just 
go directly to the roots. You don't want to just jump right into this is the problem. This is the root of the problem because sometimes we're not ready for that. I'm not always ready to to work through the deep, deep seated reason of why I feel that I have to go from being selective to, you know, focusing on avoiding is what's the difference between the two. Maybe I just need to get to the ends that are still mad at versus getting to the root, root, root of why this shows up in my life. And I also say this because you don't want to just hit the roots because you want to be able to slowly work your way up. We, there's a process in this healing. Like when you try to go from A to Z without dealing with everything in between, ish can show up wrong and you can get in a point where you're not ready to go to the root and you're not ready to it, to deal with the root to where then it causes even more havoc. So I, I tell you, avoid trying to jump directly to the root and instead like you do with your hair, Work your way up, start at the bottom. Sometimes you have to repeat, like you kind of come, you get to a snag and you have to repeat that step all over again versus trying to jump all the way back up the top and then dang, you pulled out all your hair. And that's what I'm not trying to do. I'm not trying to cut everything off and trying to get to these emotions and I'm not trying to cut off. And I don't think that's the, the plant. That's not the best route to getting to your healing. You can avoid the roots. I don't know why I just said that, I'm like, but you can avoid the roots. This whole process is you don't have to touch the roots. Even when you're detangling your hair, you don't have to touch the roots to, to detangle some things. Sometimes it's just good enough just to get to the surface level and deal with that. You don't always have to go so deep. Focus on the matted areas in your current situation and that's good enough. I think we feel that we have to get everything. It's a one and done. We have to strengthen our cuticles, strengthen our minds and our, our thought process and our mindset. And we have to do all this work all at once when no, a lot of times it's not about doing it all at once, but it's about sectioning off the emotions. Like you section off your hair. It's easier to manage your hair when you're trying to detangle it when you're putting it in smaller, manageable chunks. And that's the same thing with your emotions. Sometimes you just need to section off your emotions so you're not looking at it from a whole picture of, oh my God, my life is a mad at mess. But it's like, okay, maybe it's just my relationships in my, my intimate relationship. Maybe it's just my work. Maybe it's my relationship with myself. Maybe it's how I talk to myself. Maybe it's my relationship to food or alcohol or whatever it is. Figuring out what are the smaller chunks? What are the sections that you need to put your emotions in and how can you detangle those sectioning off your emotions and not sectioning off like I'm only going to feel this but mentally kind of putting them in boxes so you can be like okay this is these are the different things that are going on versus seeing it as one full picture it helps you distinguish the areas that you've worked on the areas that may need a little bit more work and the areas that you've been neglecting big time but if you don't section it off and you don't kind of look at it at smaller chunks, you're kind of seeing this as a, a large mess and it feels overwhelming. And oftentimes it's really important to section off your emotions or what you're going through and things that you're planning on working through because sometimes we can't get it all done in one, it's not a one and done situation. Oftentimes it's not a one and done. There may be times where you're so exhausted at working on something like me saying, me working with this one person who I feel like has hurt me that I feel like I betrayed from. I, you know, me going back to it, it's been exhausting. So sometimes I've needed to walk away. I've needed to come back to it at a later point. But if I didn't section it off and I saw everything as one big piece, you keep walking away from the whole picture. You're never going to get to even one section being detangled. So it's sectioning off is hella, hella important in detangling your emotions. But the other part of that is we talked about adding the water. We talked about deep conditioning before you even touch your emotions, before you even start to comb through what's going on in your life. A lot of the a huge part of this 
is sitting in it. And I know that sounds crazy, but even with your hair, you put the deep condition, you wet your hair, you deep condition it, you section it, but you need to next let it sit. Let it sit. Let it let it sit without action. Marinate in what's coming up. Allow yourself to observe what's coming up. And it's not just about it's not about jumping to action, but sometimes there's a point in your life in all this matted mess that's kind of going on and tingling and nodding and releasing before you can get to that point is sit in it. Sit and see what comes up. So much shows up in our body that I think we neglect. I, I know I am totally one of those people who has neglected. And when I do listen more to where the emotions are showing up in my body, and that takes a moment of sitting, for me, meditation helps with that. Sometimes also just being in yoga poses as well, but just allow myself to sit and be okay. Let it sit. Let the everything that's going on sit and observe what's going on before I even try to begin to come up with the solution and when I'm able to do that and having the patience to just pause which is pretty much right there it it helps me come to a solution it helps me get that clarity being able to take your time will help you not do further damage Because when you try to rush into detangling your emotions, detangling the matted things that are going on in your life that's feeling chaotic, when you try to rush to action, sometimes you're making an action that's actually going to be more harmful than helpful. So yeah, I kind of say that it's really important to be able to let yourself sit in those emotions, let yourself sit in what's coming up. And also to that point, then you can start moving. Then you can start breaking out the comb. And sometimes breaking out the comb is professional help. Sometimes breaking out the comb is journaling and it's coming up with different things and allowing yourself to be open to the possibility. It's not just this is the best answer and this is the best path, but feeling into here are all the options that can come up and what option feels right in my body. Allowing your body to talk to you, have that conversation with your body. Let yourself be like, okay, this is the det- this is the entanglement. God, I love the word. This is the entanglement. These are the different options with the entanglement. What physically feels like the like the yummy answer that feels like oh, the release. Now that you've, you know, wet it, you've got the slip You've sat in it. What feels right? Giving yourself the opportunity saying that there's, it's not just either or, but these are the options and allowing your body to fill into that. Also knowing that, you know, sometimes we need to examine and then reapply products when necessary. Sometimes you need to examine, sit in it, hydrate it, slip it up and do all these different things, but you need to come back. Oftentimes you need to come back. I I don't feel that there's ever been a situation in this healing journey that I've been on and that we've all been on where it's a like I've done this, checked off the mark, and now I never have to come back. Things show up. They just show up differently. And so being able to be open to the fact that things are going to, you know, you may need to reexamine. You may need to reapply and you may need to try something different and being okay with it, that giving yourself that grace to get to that point of where, okay, I've done the work, I've started detangling things. And once I've detangled, okay, great. Then you like want to get to the point where you're like, you're about to twist and secure your hair. What can you ritualistically do to twist and secure the detangled emotions? What will help you feel that you've secured to where you are in a good space to move forward? How can you get move on to that next section so you can repeat that next step and that in the repeat the next process? Like what will help you twist and secure your emotions to know that you are able to level up to probably the next time you need to kind of go through this. And that's something I've been trying to figure out right now. 
Like I'm like, okay, this is where I am. These are the situations I'm going through. And I have been coming up with situations, whether it's for me, I created a point where I sit at my altar and I talk to my ancestors. I light a candle. I may write something out and I may burn it. Like, what is it? Is it, you know, I create a process where I will do all these different things. I will have a certain yoga kriya that I'm using. And then I will use my maybe lovely bath products um, that I love from Hood Botanica. If y'all don't know Hood Botanica, y'all are missing out. But like I have certain soap products that I use that have healing elements to it that help me feel like I have released. I do use the shower for me to not just clean my body, but to cleanse my soul. And so there are rituals that I use to help me twist and secure once I've been able to work through detangling the knotted moments and chaotic feelings in my life. And I take all this to say, please don't rush. This is not like, okay, I got to get to the detanglement. So I got to get to a destination. There is no destination in healing. There is no destination healing. This is a journey. There is absolutely the only, the destination, you get to a destination when you die. And that's just because that's when the healing stopped. That's when you, that's when you let out the last exhale. There's no more inhales in your body, but that's not a destination. So there is no destination. There's no need to rush through. Like, I got to detangle these situations. I know we feel like, oh my God, I got to get through this. Life won't be okay until I work through detangling this moment in my life. And that for me was something I had to learn as well. Like working through some of these emotions that I'm going through, working through detangling how I feel about being a caregiver versus me wanting to be free and do what I want to do, me working through the anger I have with myself about how I've allowed situations to make me angry, how I've allowed myself to not trust my intuition and work with people that intuitively I knew weren't in alignment with what I was wanting to do, intuitively allowed myself to be in intimate relationships with people who I knew weren't, weren't right for me. And so learning how to not have to rush through needing the answer, rush through needing the how. Sometimes you just need to sit in it, be patient, not rush through it, and things will loosen up because you'll find the right slip for you, the right slip that helps coat your emotions. You will fill that out, figure out what works for you. I say it all the time. Wellness is not a one and done. It's not a one size fits all. What works for you to detangle your emotions and what you need to decondition it, what you need to create that slip, what you need to soften the mood so you can get to these moments and what what it means to rush or not rush it's going to be different from you than it is for me. But we all have these moments where, yes, we need to understand how to detangle our emotions like we detangle our hair. We all need to know that most likely cutting it all off and starting over is just going to cause a problem all over again. We all have these situations where we need to be patient with ourselves. We need to not always jump for the root but work our way up from the bottom to then get to the root so then we can find a more structural, healthy, holistic way of healing. And that's what I got for you today. I hope that your hair and your emotions detangle with ease and that you're able to find a way to twist and secure those moments so you can continue leveling up. You have it all within you. You know, for me to tell you all these things, you probably know these things. It's just sometimes we need to hear it from another perspective. We need to hear it from another person. And we need to try and, you know, see what works and then shift it. But if you don't do anything, you're going to have a matted mess. If you don't even begin the process of figuring out what are the right tools and figuring out what works for you. You're constantly going to be in the mad at mess. And is that the life that you choose that you really want to live? I don't think so. I think you want to work through some of this stuff, but 
I tell you, have grace and compassion for yourself because this is a journey. It is a process. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram, and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like Hello 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 Love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening, and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.